It all starts with a dead girl. Today we're exploring The Medium, developed and published by Polish game studio Bloober Team in 2021. The Medium is a psychological horror game played in the third-person perspective. You control the game's protagonist, Marianne, through a story-driven tale of two worlds colliding through her unique abilities. The game features dual-reality gameplay, often simultaneously, and combines that with puzzle-solving, sinister spirits, lost souls, and a thought-provoking narrative. The Medium is a single-player game with the art book and soundtrack available as DLC, with two of the songs available for free download. No further DLC content is planned at this time. If you're looking for a comparable, think of games like Silent Hill, Resident Evil without the gunplay, and even Visage, which we reviewed in 2021. System requirements are a little steeper than most games we've covered. You want at least a 6th generation Intel i5 or a Ryzen 5 quad-core CPU, a GTX 1650, 1060, or Radeon R9 390X and 8 gigs of memory. To get the most from what the game offers graphically, you want to step things up another notch or two. You also need 55 gigs of available storage and Windows 10 64-bit. The game features two very distinct but oh so familiar realities to explore with up to about one third of the game played in a split screen format sharing both realities at the very same time. This is a very interesting addition and as far as I know unique to the medium. The real world is where you'll spend the majority of your time exploring but you also spend a lot of time in either split screen or completely enveloped in the spirit realm where you can talk to ghosts and spirits and explore the world in a completely different light. Not all areas are accessible by both realities, so you may need to think outside the box to perform certain tasks. Marianne has several useful abilities as a medium. Insight will help to highlight paths and at times provide hints. It'll help to tap into and instill experiences, memories, and flashbacks from items and her surrounding environment. While in the spirit realm, Marianne has access to the spirit shield, which is a defensive ability aimed at shielding her from damage. She'll also have access to Spirit Blast, which allows her to focus her spirit energy upon certain objects found in the game. And lastly, Marianne can experience an out-of-body experience, allowing her to access areas not physically accessible. But be careful, if you leave your body for too long, you'll be sure to fade away. The game offers up a handful of really clever and interesting puzzles, some of which require both realities working together to solve. In some cases, you'll be needing to gather supplies and learn how to develop photos, navigate using mirrors, find objects, and use insight to find a path to unlock areas, among others. There's some truly fun puzzles to solve, and while some may be a little challenging, none are truly difficult. Graphics are a real high point for the medium. The environments, with inspiration from paintings by artist Zukoslaw Bekinski, are superbly designed and very much unique. The textures and details on display here are quite a sight for those who love eye candy. The animations and motion captures are also very well put together, with very few exceptions. The cutscenes are fantastic and seamlessly blend into gameplay, providing another level of depth to the game. So while the graphics are a high point here, to get the most from the game you will want a GPU that supports ray tracing, which not everybody has at this point. That being said, the game still looks terrific even without it. The sound design found here is really good. The sound effects are mostly subtle, nothing overbearing, but feel accurate, right down to the heavy and monstrous footsteps of the beasts within. The atmospheric noise, thunder, and weather effects are fantastic and very immersive. Music is performed by seasoned composers Akira Yamoka and Arkadins Raikowski. The result is quite masterful. Here, have a listen. Crying, tears in isolation. Voice acting is also wonderfully performed all around. Compliments to the actors and writers here. Get the fuck away from me! Oh. <sighs> Sound from start to finish is a fantastic experience and quite enjoyable. The story. The story, where do I start without spoiling it for you? The story is not what you might expect. It spans decades, explores loss and despair, and strings together a plethora of experiences, past, future, and present. It contains mature themes and violence, colorful language, and references to occupied Poland during World War II. As such, the medium is rated M for mature audiences. Throughout the game, you'll find postcards, notes, and diaries, while exploring visions, echoes of the past, and memory shards, all helping to weave together a grand story. I certainly got a lot more than I could have expected. The game is very easy to learn, play, and control the various abilities and features. 
A gamepad is recommended to play, which makes movement a little smoother. Using a keyboard, I noticed a few items were a little more difficult to access due to positioning. The medium consists of predominantly linear pathing, moving from section to section as the story progresses, with not a whole lot of room for diversion outside of some minor exploration. That being said, it doesn't really take anything away from the experience. My only real gripe with the gameplay is that I want to intuitively pan the camera and the viewpoint around, but having a fixed camera system, that option just isn't available here. Expect the medium to take between 7 and 10 hours to complete, depending on how much exploration and reading you choose to do. There are some extras to find, such as postcards, notes, and memories hidden throughout the game that might make the game worth a second playthrough, but outside of that, the replay value here isn't particularly high. The game has some fantastic storytelling, backed up by some spectacular visuals, great acting, and audio throughout. It does offer up a few jump scares and is creepy enough to have raised the hair on my arms on more than one occasion, so for fans of horror, this should fit the bill without being particularly gruesome and disturbing. Shock and awe isn't the premise of this one, but there is plenty here to scratch that itch, nonetheless.